our extraordinary group of world-leading researchers here at the University of Queensland. And what they've developed is a vaccine that can help save lives and protect lives. And this is a model of the vaccine. And this vaccine will help save lives not just here in Queensland, not just here in Australia, but around the world. And what a gift from Australia's researchers. A lot has changed since um, a few weeks back when Greg Hunt made those comments at the University of Queensland um, in relation to the, um, the vaccine candidate that's being developed there, or that was being developed, that's changed now. And uh, you can see his tone, his demeanor. Uh, it's, you know, a lot, a lot of confidence um, behind what's happening there, uh, not just for the situation in Australia, but also possibly the benefits for the world in terms of the research that was being done at the University of Queensland. Now, fast forward to today, um, I'll play the clip. But the issue, uh, which by mutual agreement with CSL uh, led to the decision not to proceed to stage three trials and therefore not to uh, move to a, a purchase, is that it, there was the risk of false positive HIV results. Uh, they are false. Uh, it comes from the uh, protein that uh, was used. Um, and as a result of that, the scientific advice is that uh, the risk to vaccine confidence was the principal issue here. Yeah, so totally different uh, demeanour, you know. We've gone from being totally confident and or very confident to a position where, you know, we always kind of knew that this wasn't going to maybe work out. That's why we had backups and, uh, you know, it's um, showing positive, false positives for HIV. So we decided just to move on from there because obviously um, it's not good for the confidence within the community. Um, now, Greg Hunt is a politician and politicians are always going to be optimistic and talk things up uh, because they're using uh, people's money, they're purchasing different things and they're you know, trying, to, trying to be uh, hopeful. So you're always going to get this kind of spin from them and uh, especially when they're talking at the actual institution itself, uh, they're going to be a lot more, uh, you know, praising what's going on. Uh, what I really wanted to focus on was how the media actually is participating in, um, in this. So at the end of the conference with, uh, that ScoMo and Greg Hunt had today, uh, the Channel 9 Today Show or whatever it was that we're watching, um, you know, it was really interesting. I'll play the clip. The health minister there kind of summed it up pretty well at the end. Um, we were just making a point as I were talking that, interestingly, they haven't increased the number of Pfizer vaccines they've got access to. So we've got 10 million of those, which is enough for 5 million Australians. That's the one that they're rolling out in the UK at the moment. It's the one that we're expecting to probably be approved here in January to roll out in March. But probably a big reason why they haven't increased their access to that vaccination is that's the one they have to hold at minus 70 degrees. So it's a very tricky vaccination, which perhaps explains why we have and increase those numbers. Yeah, it is the first of the market, the one we see getting rolled out in the UK and, and the US, it, it appears as well. But uh, he did emphasise the fact that the AstraZeneca one is being made in Melbourne. Uh, it means it will actually roll out here quicker than the others too. So look, some good news there. It seems like they are stocking up on, on other fronts. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, the, the headline there was that the UQ vaccine uh, project has unfortunately uh, come to an end. Very kind of uh, casual, like nothing to see here, guys. You know, ScoMo and Greg Hunt, they summed it up pretty well. Um, let's just move on. Uh, there's all these other vaccines that are coming in. Let's just take those ones and, uh, you know, nothing to see here. So they're not very curious about, um, you know, what was actually said, uh, which was we have a candidate in Australia which was returning false positives for HIV. Now, they don't really want to dwell on those things too much, which is interesting because when an actual candidate is announced. So when the the UQ um, vaccine was first discussed, you know, the media were very happy to kind of dwell on it for a long time and talk about all the positives. And, um, you know, here, here's a clip of that. Researchers in Queensland have put Australia at the forefront of the race to find a coronavirus vaccine with early testing delivering outstanding results. For more, Jessica Millwood is in Brisbane. And good morning, Jess. Is the vaccine working? 
Oh, it is, Alex, and researchers in the Netherlands have said that we are now at the forefront of global coronavirus vaccine science. Yeah, so you can see, like, they're very kind of eager and positive and like, hey, it's happening in Australia world first. And, you know, even the Netherlands says that, you know, we're the best. Now, here's the clip of today from the same same crew. First to that breaking news, and the Prime Minister has just confirmed Australia will seek extra doses of two other COVID vaccine candidates as the trial for the University of Queensland jab is abandoned. Let's bring in federal politics reporter Fiona Willen now for the details. Uh, the Prime Minister and the Health Minister announced this just a moment ago at a press conference in Canberra, confirming that the government's deal to buy 50 million doses of the University of Queensland vaccine is off. And that's because something went wrong in the trials. So some participants received false positive test results for HIV. The Prime Minister pointed out the University of Queensland jab was one of four being considered. At no stage can I assure you that uh, we believed that all four of those vaccines would likely get through that process. If that had occurred, that would have been truly extraordinary based on the process of vaccine development, not only in this country, but anywhere else. So that's why we spread our risk. Alex, the government is still expecting to start rolling jabs out in March. So again, you can see they're not too uh, eager to really get into it, into the meat of it. They don't want to really talk about uh, the detail of what went wrong and, you know, look back on maybe the comments that were said by Greg Hunt earlier. Nothing like this. They're not too curious about that. They pretty much ended off with saying, you know, there's other jabs coming. Don't worry. OK, now any kind of decent, um, proper, you know, fourth estate media would be willing to be critical, uh, would be wanting to find answers, would be wanting to ask questions like are the other vaccines going to have issues like this or whatever it is they'd be wanting to do those things. Uh, but the media here in Australia and, ar and around the world are just happy to toe the government line, uh, stop people from actually criticising the processes. Uh, you know, everything's about trust the science. Uh, you know, everything else that anyone else says is false information. It's false facts. We have to censor it. Um, you know, but trust the science um, and trust the government. Now, I'm not saying not to trust the science and not to trust the government. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that we should be curious. Uh, we should be really looking into what happened uh, with the candidate in Australia. And the media should be doing a much more thorough job of looking into these things because that will really help the community to get a really good understanding of, um, of what's coming. And, uh, you know, what are, what, are, what are the downsides? What are the risks? What are the benefits? Whatever it is, we can't just live in a society that, that just discusses and focuses on the benefits and positives, especially, especially with something like this, where we can see these errors and stuff popping up because it's being pushed out at such a rapid speed for a whole host of different reasons. And, uh, you know, it's not the media can't just step back and say, oh, we don't have time to do that kind of thing. Because I know when, <laughs> when the issue was about hydroxychloroquine, the media spent, you know, endless amounts of time talking about the side effects and discussing the research papers and looking into it and all this kind of stuff. And that was for something that didn't even return a false positive for HIV. So, look, the main point I'm trying to make is the media is doing a really bad job of keeping politicians, keeping scientists um, um, accountable and even a worse job of keeping the public properly informed. And uh, look, for my last clip, I'm just going to leave this clip without any comment. Um, here it is. Uh, UQ for once again uh, showing that uh, Queensland has the best of the best, that when it comes to uh, developments, when it comes to um, uh, setting the agenda, uh, the work through UQ and its scientists is uh, second to none.